What's up, everybody? Uh, we're back in here talking about this Apple, Apple River self-defense trial. It's really interesting. And there was a, a good little legal argument when the defendant's wife, now ex-wife, took the stand today about spousal privilege, what could and couldn't be discussed. The defense invoked the spousal privilege. Very interesting factual background that they're divorced, but they're still on good terms that she did it for financial reasons, not um, for any reasons that you know she hates the defendant or thinks he's guilty or anything like that. It was interesting because I guess the defense asked to have her carved out to the rule of sequestration, meaning she could sit it there in the trial because she's married to the defendant. And the judge was not too happy to say, I thought they were married. The defense was like, I thought technically they still were. I guess I was wrong. I apologize, judge, because technically they're not. But spousal privilege does still cover private conversations while you were married. And we have a little voir dire where the state calls her up to the stand, asks her questions to determine whether or not something is in fact a private conversation. Then it is the judge's call. What can they get into? What can they not as far as conversations with the defendant? So that's going to be the first part of the video. Then we're going to listen to a lot of her testimony. I'm going to skip through some of the slower parts, but we're going to listen to her literally testify against her husband or her ex-husband and then hear the defense on cross, basically turn her into their witness. And I want you to determine who do you think she's there for? Who do you think she's there to help? The state or the defense? It's really interesting testimony. And then I kind of went back and forth on whether or not I wanted to show a short clip of one of the victims, describe what they went through. I think I am going to show it. We'll do a little warning before it because you can see some stuff from the video. Um, but it was a highlight of the defense's opening statements about where this victim's hands were. Um, and as far as the self-defense claim, why the defendant felt that he was in danger. Um, he had to have a reasonable belief that he was in danger of serious bodily injury or death. And that's, you know, the standard in Wisconsin for self-defense and to uh, respond with lethal force, which he did here. So we're going to look at that a little bit at the end of the video. So everybody hit that like button if you guys haven't already. Make sure you subscribe to our page because you guys are asking for more coverage on this trial. So we're bringing it to you again tonight. Um, eventually we'll do a live on it. Uh, but I did not have time tonight. I won't have time tomorrow night, uh, but maybe sometime next week. I don't know when this case is supposed to end or conclude. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments, but let's get to um, his wife. And this is again, outside the presence of the jury to determine whether or not these conversations were private. Because if you just have conversations where everybody can hear you, it's not going to be covered by the spousal privilege. So there's a couple different conversations the state wants to get into, and uh, we're going to hear them try to set the background and the judge make a call on what can or can't be testified about. All right, Mr. Anderson, can you state your first and last name? By the way, everybody told me very kindly that this was the best channel for audio. So that's why I'm here. Still not great audio in my opinion, uh, but hopefully you can bear with me and we can get through it. Sandra Mule. And Sandra, you were on the river with Nikolai on July 30, 2022? Yes. And do you remember him leaving your group at some point? Yes. And then do you remember some sort of commotion? Some sort of what? Some sort of commotion or disturbance? Yes. <clears throat> Did he come back to your group at some point? Yes. And was your group all pretty much all together then? Yes, I think so. And was Nikolai saying things when he came back about what happened? Um, I don't know if he did then or this, when he came back the next time. Okay, because so he left twice? I'm going to boost the audio just a little bit because hers is pretty low, and then I'm going to put mine down. Usually this is the recipe for success. I hate that I can't uh, ask you guys if this is working, but hopefully it is. All right, I've boosted there the court's audio a little for her. The prosecutor gets very loud, though, so be ready to adjust your volume accordingly. Mm -hmm. So after the second time he came back, was he saying stuff about what happened? A little bit, not much. Um, do you talk about his knife? Mm -hmm. Yes. And was that when he was talking about that, was that when he was back with your group? Yes. So did multiple people hear him talking about that? Objection. No foundation. Were you guys standing in a group? Objection. It's hard for me to understand what you mean by group. So yeah, sure. How many, how many people were in your tubing group? Um, I think there was about eight of us. And when Nikolai came back, if you remember, were you guys sitting down in your tube, standing together? Objection. My point is, I think it's about whether Nick was talking to Sandra. So when he says you guys, is he talking about the entire group? Is he talking about these two? I'll, I'll, when he came back and was talking about what happened, was it to just you or multiple people? 
Um, I think it was just me at the beginning. And then later? Um, I think you talked to someone else while we were on the tubes. And you overheard some of that conversation? Not much of it. I, I couldn't hear what they were saying. Okay. But if, if, do you recall speaking with law enforcement? I'm sorry, what? Do you recall doing interviews with law enforcement? Yes. And do you remember if you told them about hearing what he was saying when he was talking to other people? I don't remember. Okay. But it'd be in the transcript? It could be done. And so when he said, when you said he was talking to you, where were you? Were you by the people? When we, when he came back to what you mean? Yeah. No. Where were you? Again, you know why they're asking all these questions in German. Did other people hear this conversation or was it just had between husband and wife? On the little sandbar. They were in the water. And where were the other members of your group? In the water. How close? I don't know. I didn't pay attention. Five feet, 10 feet? Probably 10. Was Nikolai speaking loud enough for other people to hear? Objection. No foundation. Was he whispering, talking in a normal voice? I animated. I don't remember. You. <clears throat> Who was he talking to while you were tubing? Amy. Objection. Tubing when? Uh, when you were tubing to the exit. Amy. Okay. And that's a mandatory? Yes. If other people talked about what Nikolai said when he came back, is that if you know, did you tell them about it or would they have overheard it? I didn't tell anybody. Okay, so if other people knew what he said when he came back, it means they overheard what he was saying? Objection. This is a lot here, so I'm going to give some latitude so we can get to the core of this. Again, it's not in front of the jury, so the judge is going to let him lead a little bit to try to figure out was this a private conversation or not. Overruled. You didn't tell anyone else what he told you? No. Okay. Um, and then while Nikolai has been in jail, you guys have spoken on the phone? Yes. And so we're done with that first conversation, which is at the scene of the actual crime and the alleged crime. And now we're talking about jail calls, which are obviously recorded. We're going to kind of skip through this because this one is obviously not private. On those recordings, does it say these are being recorded? Yes. That's at the start of every phone call? Yes. And um, we don't even point. need to hear a lot of these. Yeah. But I do want to the two, yes. So all you know about is what Nick the defense asked some questions again to try to clarify some things, but I want to get to the judge's ruling and why he makes the decisions that he makes about whether or not these are private conversations and therefore subject to the spousal privilege. Do you have other witnesses on this issue? Yes. Um, I have a 911 call where you can also hear Nikolai talking in the background. Well, that's different. I mean, as far as this question of whether or not the statements to Ms. Mew were private. No. Mr. Nelson? No, we have a privilege. All right. The privilege has been asserted. It's a statutory privilege. Uh, as I mentioned, a spouse may prevent another spouse, the other spouse, from talking about private conversations uh, that were made during the marriage. Uh, we're talking about two different uh, conversations between uh, spouses. Uh, one occurred on July 30, 2022, uh, shortly after the incident. Uh, on this record, um, I'm convinced that it was a private conversation because it was engaged between two people standing apart as far as 10 feet away from others. Uh, I consider that to be a private conversation and uh, will allow the privilege to be asserted for that. So the conversation that happened, at the scene of the alleged crime, right after, shortly after, between husband and wife, is protected. So she cannot be forced to testify about it. The defense is blocking it, which you're allowed to do if at the time, even if you're not married now, at the time of the conversation, it was private, and you had that conversation. So boom, spousal privilege invoked and um, given by the judge. Now, what about the other conversation? Communication. As far as the jail communication is concerned, that clearly is not private. Ms. Mew testified that she knew it was being recorded. If it's being recorded, uh, somebody else has the ability to listen, and the conversations are taking place knowing that somebody else is recording and possibly could listen. Uh, so that conversation was not private, and the state may inquire about the substance of those conversations. Uh, how does the, I don't know how the court wants me to handle that. I know it's very so public. You ask some questions like, hey, can I say it was a jail call? The defense is like, uh, no. You can say you talked to your uh, husband shortly after. And he, these were the conversations, and that's what the judge ends up agreeing on, uh, to. All right, let's jump ahead a little bit now into her testimony. So now this is in front of the jury. They're asking her real questions, explain what happened that day, where were you, what'd you see. doesn't mean she can't testify to anything. That was just specifically that one private conversation the judge is not allowing her to testify to. Didn't really seem like she wanted to, by the way. It's the vibes I'm getting so far. What city and state do you live in? Were you... Tubing with Nikolai on July 30, 2022? Yes. Were you with a... Nikolai is the defendant's name, Nikolai Mew. 
group of people? I'm sorry, what? Were you with a group of people? Yes. Yes. And Sandra, can you see that? Do you yeah. go by Sandy or Sandra? Sandy. Okay. The far left person, who's that? It's Ariel. And how do you know Ariel? He's a national yeah, kind of nephew. And, a national and you can see this is the whole group that they went with. So a decent sized group, but you know, Nikolai, or we, I shouldn't say we know from all the testimony, it seemed like he was by himself over there. All these other guys and gals didn't come over there to his aid. And so I think it's the state's trying to show he was there with a big group too, but the defense has made it pretty clear in my opinion, through all the state witnesses and even the victims that it seemed like he was by himself, but that's what the state's doing here. Okay. Do you guys, you and Nick, would you socialize with them a lot? Maybe three times. Okay. And you, that's what you know him as a teaching? Mm -hmm. Yes. Him over there. Okay. So he, he had gone to the group of the young guys, came back, and then at some point he went back there, but you didn't see him go back there again. No, I didn't keep track of him. Okay. How, how long um, was he back that you remember before you noticed he was gone again? I don't know, maybe five minutes. I don't know for sure. Do you remember saying maybe 10 minutes? I, I may have. And then when he went, just can we approach? Yes. They're just arguing at sidebar here. Did Ariel's phone get knocked in the water? I don't know how it went in the water, but yes. And do you remember in relation to the two times Nikolai went over to those the group of young guys, was it before the first time, after the first time? Do you remember? It was what before or after? When the phone got lost. Oh, it was before. Okay. And was Nikolai looking for the phone? Yes. What, what were you guys doing, the rest of the group, while Nikolai was looking for the phone? I don't know what they were doing. I was busy Is sitting that in the why he was snorkeling in two feet of water, maybe? Or two, because I had a hard time getting out of it. And I was just looking at the sky and the trees and just relaxing and enjoying my day. You guys, I mean, your group was kind of by sandbar. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And when Nikolai was back at the group of young guys the second time, did something catch your attention? I happened to... Every once in a while, I'd sit up in my tube just to see where Nick was at. And the one time I did that, it looked like there was people around him. And all of a sudden, I saw him on his hands and knees in the water, and somebody was hitting him. Didn't you originally say that the first thing? So, I mean, obviously, in case you haven't picked it up yet, my feel is she is there as a witness for the defense. So it's interesting that the state called her. Now, she's going to give some good details for the state, obviously, and what they were doing and how many people were there with Nikolai and all of that. And she does give some facts that I think are necessary for them, but... And the defense could call her in their case in chief. So it's not like they have to hide from her. <clears throat> um, but to me, I mean, she's definitely testifying to people being around him, hitting him. He's on his hands and knees, definitely in fear with that many young fit guys. And you're one older guy. And we're going to hear about some of the physical ailments the defendant has, which worked for the popcorn shooting self-defense trial here in my backyard in Pasco County. The thing you noticed was all the young guys jumping out of their tubes. I may have. And the reason I say that is if the older individual criminal defendant also has physical issues, that could be more of a reason why he was in fear for his life um, or serious bodily harm because he knows he can't really defend himself. And it's at that point that you alerted your group and sent some people over there or asked some people to go over there? Yeah, I had asked two of them. And who were those two people? Ariel and Ernesto. Okay. And again, Ariel in the group photo is on the far left. Yes, he's with the red, white, and blue. And Ernesto is the guy, the only one without a shirt off in that photo? Yeah, he's on the other side. It's like second from where I'm in. Is that the group that you see them jump up? Yes. yes. Okay. And do Ernesto, after you see the boys jump up and you alert the group, do Ernesto and Ariel start walking over there? Yes, Ariel went first and then Ernesto went. And then hit him. Yep. And then you remember was he's or saw was he's on his hands and knees in the water and somebody hit him. Yep. And then did you see anything after that? I did not. And how at some point after what what do you remember happening after that? They just brought him back. And, and I saw the police come and people were screaming and um, 
kid was by a tree, I guess. And later, because we stayed there for about 20 minutes. And I'm going to get to that in a second, but I just want to back up a little bit. So you said they brought him back. Did Nikolai come back before or after or with Ernesto and Ariel, if you remember? With them, I think. Did you actually see Nikolai walking back from the group or did you just, was he just there? Like next thing you noticed? I saw him coming. I didn't see him leave that group. I saw him no walking back. And were you watching him the whole time he was walking back? Not at the beginning when he left the group. I didn't see that. And did you watch him? So I just want to make sure I'm understanding. Leaning up against the wall. Carpet, many of them. This is the river. Mm -hmm. They're repositioning the corner. See, this is the sandbar. Okay, with me. Mm -hmm. okay. Were you, you guys are somewhere around here? Yeah, right next to it. Okay, in the water? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, like right here? Yep. Okay. And then the, do you remember where the young boys were or young kids or adults? Yeah, they were on that side. The other side of the river? They, they're using language like young boys to make it seem like they're not grown adult males. They sure look like it in the video. Or? Yes, they weren't on the same side we were on. And they're, were they downstream ways? Yes. Okay. They were definitely young, but adult in appearance and physical stature. So, right. I mean, there's no scale, so yeah. I'll just draw them generally here. So, at some point, Nikolai walked back. Mm -hmm. And you said you didn't see him when he left at first. Do you know, like, if, if you know, I don't want you to guess, that, like, if, when he was halfway, did you start to watch him come back when he was almost back to your group? Um... Probably a little less or a little more than halfway. Okay, so maybe like around here? No. With essentially the people sitting at this table prior to testifying, is that right? Yes. And do you remember saying in that meeting that you weren't watching him when he walked back the whole time? Yes. Okay. So he does some improper impeachment, but again, she's basically like, yeah, I guess that's what I said. To me, she seems like she's credible. She's doing the best she can. She doesn't have a perfect memory. Um, she didn't see everything. She saw certain things, um, but he does ask her some details. And he's like, well, you're saying five minutes now, but you said 10 minutes before. Well, you did see him or you didn't see him. She's like, well, I mean, I saw him part of the time, but I wasn't watching him all the time. So it's kind of weak impeachment, but, and improper because he's not actually doing it the appropriate way, but she's answering. Yeah, I guess that could be right. So, you know, which one it is? Yes. I probably didn't watch him the whole time. Okay. Obviously, because if you're there with a group of people, you're not watching one individual person the whole time, but he wants to make sure that the jury knows that she didn't see every single thing that happened. So she can't testify. He was under duress at the time the crimes were committed. And after Nikolai was back by you, your group, what did you see? What did you hear? Not, not amongst your group, but down river. Um, there was a lot of commotion down there. Um, I saw um, the police arrive. I saw someone, I didn't really see the person laying by the tree, but I saw somebody give him that person CPR. Yeah, um, let me ask a question about that. So the person who was getting CPR, was that on the other side of the river from you? Yes, it was by where the other people's troops were. So, somewhere down here? Yeah. And did you see that CPR going on? You said you were there about 20 minutes? Yeah, I think it was about 20 minutes. I... The commotion, um, can you describe the commotion? Um, people were more frantic, it seemed. Um, they were just going to people that needed help. And what do you mean needed help? Did you see people who were injured? No, just, I, like I said, I didn't see the one by the tree either. I'm just assuming, but no. So what did you... What did you see to know they're doing CPR? I saw somebody pushing up and down on the person's chest. Okay. Did you see blood? I did not. And so you said you saw law enforcement arrive. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you remember seeing a couple of officers in the water? Yes. Is that, is that what you remember as far as law enforcement that you saw before you guys left? Yes, there may have been an ambulance, but I'm not sure. Do you, do you remember telling us in the meeting that you saw a police SUV, a couple officers in the water, and no ambulance? Yes, I do remember that. Okay. So 
Did anyone from your group, once Ariel, Ernesto, and Nikolai are back with you, did anyone walk over to where the commotion was going on? I heard somebody did. I didn't see them. Incidents, I'll call it. Was the what was the atmosphere like among your group? Were you guys drinking, listening to music? We were listening to music until the phone got lost because that was the one that was playing the music on. Okay. Um, some of them were drinking. Okay. Was Nikolai drinking? He had about two beers. So we've got a lot of testimony that the group of victims had been drinking a lot and smoking some weed, and you know some of them have seizure issues and memory issues. Admittedly, on the stand, and she's saying he only had two beers. So a guy his size, two beers. We'll see if they have any more evidence that says he was drinking more than that, but probably not going to be belligerently drunk. Um, and he doesn't necessarily seem it on the video. It's all things that are going into the jury's mind that they're weighing. You know, I mean, to me, could he retreat and does he have a duty retreat? Not in Wisconsin. Um, but was he the instigator? Could he have stopped it? Did he have a reasonable belief that he was an imminent danger, right? Not in danger five minutes ago or even a minute ago, but at the time of committing the crime, was he actually in danger and needed to respond with that kind of deadly force? Is it going to be a lesser included, a first degree homicide? A lot of interesting things for the jury to consider. About just an estimate? Yeah. You were the designated sober driver home, right? Yeah, I was just drinking water. And that was pre-planned that you would be the one to drive home? No, it was not pre-planned. And then after the incident, what was the mood like when you're tubing down the river? Quiet. Was Nikolai talking? He was, I think he was talking to Amy, but I'm not positive. Okay. I didn't look to see. So when you, fair to say when you guys tubed down, the person was still getting CPR? I don't remember. There's the scene. Was the scene still chaotic? I don't think it was back then. No. No, but it was before ambulances arrived, right? I don't know for sure. Well, you said there, you saw a police SUV, two officers in the water, no ambulances, right? I didn't. I don't know for sure. I didn't pay attention, but I told you before there was no ambulance, so I guess not. And, and again, he asks her about some details she's not sure of that can go to her credibility. The jury may not think she's credible because of that. Um, but she admits she doesn't know certain things, kind of like the victims and some of those witnesses admit they don't know certain things or don't remember certain things or might not have perfect memories. That's kind of part of witnessing something that happens in the past that you have to come in court and testify to. Oh. The spot where the incident happened, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay briefly about some parts of the incident, agreed? Yes. And Nikolai has expressed to you frustration with you and your group because you didn't hear him. Yet. So again, now they're referencing certain conversations with the defendant. And we know that these conversations are not what happened at the scene of the alleged crime, but instead from the jail calls, because those are the conversations the judge allowed in. Okay. So we know some of this, the prosecutor is not being able to get into all the conversations, but let's hear what she's going to confirm Nikolai said about the incident. Incident, agreed? Yes. And Nikolai has expressed to you frustration with you and your group because you didn't hear him yelling for help, right? Right. And he cast some blame on you and your group for not coming in response to his yells for help. Yes. I don't know why that's good for the state that the guy's crying for help from his group, screaming for them, and they don't hear him. Therefore, that's more confirmation that he believes that he needs help. And he didn't get it. And you responded, you couldn't hear any yells for help. No, couldn't hear it, not over the water. So maybe the state's going to use that to say he didn't actually ask for help. I don't know, but I, I don't know if I would have brought that up. Nick's knife, um, you described it as, you believed it was a silver blade, black handle. 
I'm just going to skip him and talking about his knife. He brought the knife to cut like cords. She didn't think he had it anymore. We may hear some of it, but I'm going to skip through some of it. Do you remember telling law enforcement that you heard screaming? I don't remember. I may have. I just don't remember. You um, would it refresh your memory to see a transcript? <clears throat> yes. When the when you saw CPR being done on the shore, was the was the rest of your group looking in the same direction, watching what was going on? I'm assuming so. You're there for so 20 minutes. By the way, is really quick with objections. He sustains a lot of them, and I think he does a really good job to keep the lawyers from doing it correctly and properly, which I always appreciate. Gosh, I guess. Just, just, just wait till. Sorry. Just the objection. This one. I'm sorry to hear the objection. So. You were there for, you estimate about 20 minutes with the other people from your group. As you were there, did you make observations about the people in your group? No. No, you didn't see anything that anyone was doing or looking at? No. Where were you? Okay. She's probably picking up. And what about Nikolai? Did you see where he was looking? No. Did you see what he was doing? No. So Nikolai, walks down to the, I'm talking about the second time now, the group of young guys, you see him get hit. When he's down on his hands and knees, he eventually comes back and you're not paying any attention to what Nikolai's doing. May we approach? Yes. After any attention to Nikolai? I don't recall. I must have at some point, I just don't recall. The, did Nikolai have any injuries that you saw? I didn't notice any, but I didn't pay attention either. And the people that Nikolai was down by downstream, were they bigger, smaller, same size as Nikolai? Um, I noticed some of them were skinnier, some of them were bigger. They were all younger. Do you remember telling law enforcement that they're all smaller than Nikolai and Nikolai's a big guy? No, I don't remember saying that, but if I did. You remember saying it didn't look like Nikolai got hit that hard? So these are, and again, this is improper impeachment because he's putting these statements in the record without giving her an opportunity to review them and then ask it again. So the jury's hearing them and they may not be appropriate. And it's something she said outside of court, which is technically hearsay, but whatever for all of that. The point is he's trying to get across to the jury that she was saying Nikolai was bigger than all these guys. He didn't have anything to be afraid of. Wasn't in fear for his life. He probably wasn't calling for help because we didn't hear him. Um, he can handle himself against all those little kids when, you know, he's this big guy. That's what the state's trying to prove. Because again, to show that he should not have responded with this force because he wasn't in danger. I don't remember. Go to him, render any aid, anything like that? Did I what? Go to him and render any aid or anything like that? I just made sure it didn't have any, I didn't see any blood or anything, so I'm assuming he was not too badly hurt. Okay. Nothing else, Judge. Mr. Nelson? Ms. Mew, can you tell us when you and Nick got married? When? Yeah. All right. So now it's cross-examination. And you can just tell by the tone in the criminal defense attorney's voice, especially if you heard them cross other witnesses, he knows this is going to be a friendly witness to him. Um, and he is going to get a lot of testimony out of her that's going to help their self-defense claim. Yeah, it was June 4th, 2011. Why'd you marry him? I loved him. Still true today? Yes, it is. Um, over the, the course since, did you know him before 2011? Yes, I met him. We started dating in 2008, and I met him at work a little before that. So, What did he do there at, at your place of employment? He was an engineer. What type of engineer? Um, 
I think he said it was a mechanical engineer. What did you do at the place of employment? I was a supervisor of a department. Of what department? Um, I was a supervisor of the packaging department. And it was through that that you and Nick grew to know, meet each other and then know each other, right? Yes. It sounds like there's a group of other people that you guys got to know and hang out with from work, right? Yes. Um, so you've known Nick since 2008? I've known him a little before that, maybe 2007. And during that time, you uh, eventually married him and lived with him, right? Yes. You worked with him often? I did. You interacted with his work, uh, him at work and at home? Yes. Right? Imagine you really knew this man. Yes. Would you agree that you know his character as to whether he's peaceful or violent? Yes. And again, this is all going to the self-defense. And who better to testify about it than his wife, who was there and saw it and knows him, give all this positive background about loving him and marrying him, mechanical engineer. Very interesting. Very interesting that the state decided to call her during their case in chief. Now, again, the defense could have obviously called her, but the state called her defense invoke spousal privilege to cut off certain communications. I mean, the defense has handled this beautifully, in my opinion. Is, I want to ask you some other questions about what you know about Nick, okay? All right. Um, was there a time when... It's a bunch of objections and sidebars we're going to skip through. I'm going to publish and ask you when they're on and some photos and ask you some questions about those, okay? Yes. Um, so now they're going to go through some photos about what a great guy Nick is, but there's some interesting, you know, physical things they're going to talk about that again, really wraps into similar to the popcorn shooting. If you remember from that trial, they went through all of his ailments. How he was getting old. It was hard for him to see, hard for him to walk, hard for him to move. Yes, he was an ex super cop, but he was old and decrepit at this point. That's basically what they were trying to argue as to why he was in such fear. And they ended up getting a not guilty verdict was Florida. Um, but very interesting. This is exhibit number 106. You see that? Yes. What, what's that a picture of? It's a picture of Nick and I. When is that from? Do you know? I don't remember the exact date. Um, probably about 2009, 2010. Okay. And you might not know the day. and not. It's Nick and I and our little boy, Tiki. Okay. Who's Tiki? Our dog. All right. I'm um, showing you then uh, picture 108. There's three different pictures there. Do you see those? Yes. Is that Nick and all of those? Yes. Is that Nick? Uh, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of those pictures of Nick working on some property you guys owned in South Dakota? Yes. Um, Nick, a bit of a handyman? Oh, yes. Does he fix stuff around the house? Yes. Fix stuff around the yard? Yes. Is he good with tools? Yes, he is. Do his friends sometimes call him if they've got it? And again, if it sounds like he's leading her, even though she's a friendly witness, you'd be correct because this is cross-examination. Because the state called her, again, the defense gets to lead her. Some sort of problem that they want fixed? Yes. He's the guy to go to? Yes. And does he solve it often with tools? Yes. Have you seen him carry a, a pocket knife before? Um, all the time. You see him, you know, we, in this case, I think it's, we call it a utility knife or a pocket knife, but it's a small knife that he puts in his pocket, right? Yep. Have you seen him use that before? Yes. Have you seen him solve problems around the house with that? Yes. Solve problems around the outside property with that? Yes. Have you seen other people ask him about, hey, Nick, can you do this? And he'll use the pocket knife to, to fix something or solve something. Yes. So it's again, they're trying to prove he doesn't carry it around as a weapon. Right. This isn't some, you know, sword that he carries around to hurt people with. This is a pocket knife. He, it's a utility knife that he does all these things with, including cut the ropes at the tube stuff. And everybody knew he carried this and he would help people with this knife, which is reactionary and in self-defense. And that's why he used it. It's not like he was planning to hurt some kids when he went to the river. So the defense is trying to argue, will the jury buy it? I don't know. What do you guys think? What are your feelings and thoughts for this case? Let me know. Because you guys are all potential jurors out there watching this, and I like to know kind of how you work through it as a case. Helps me as a trial lawyer understand how you guys as potential jurors look at each different witness, each piece of evidence, each argument that lawyers are making in their questions. Where are you kind of going with this as far as what do you see as self-defense or not at this point? Yes. Uh, is that Nick? Yes, it is. Is that Nick in the hospital on the two ones on the left? Yes. Why was Nick in the hospital? He had a quadruple bypass done. And when was that? Uh, I think it was 2020. Okay. And um, you see in the one on the left and in the one on the right, he has some sort of uh, red pillow that's on his chest. Do you recognize that? Yes. What was what was the purpose of the red pillow? So when he would sit up, he could hold that pillow against his chest to help prevent the pain. Okay. Um, how long was he in recovery as a result of that? Do you know? Um, I don't remember. I know he wasn't in the hospital long because I try and get you out right away. Um, I don't remember if he was home...
correct? Yes. And then you know him till today, sometime after the surgery, correct? Yes. Fair to say that since the surgery, he's had some more limitations? Yes. On his physical ability, correct? Yes. Um, he wasn't quite as fit as he was before, would you agree? Yes. And uh, maybe this happens to all of us men when we get into our 50s, but it appeared to you that he lost some of his confidence in his fitness? Yes. Lost some of his uh, ability to think he could go off and do anything and that he's invincible? Yes. This certainly he lost his ability to think he could go out and do anything and was invincible. He lost confidence in his physical fitness. He wasn't as physical fit. He wasn't able to do anything anymore. He's old and decrepit, basically. And afraid now. He was never afraid before, but now he is afraid. That's what the defense is trying to argue. And they, some cases you have the evidence, some cases you don't. They happen to have it here. It's pretty good evidence, especially during the case, state's case in chief with their witness. Certainly humbled him to that degree? Yes. And did he limit himself to some degree? He did to some degree, yes. Did he at some point tell you, like, I just can't do this anymore, or make complaints about his own fitness? His... No, Nick never did that. He wasn't a complainer? Not too much, no. And he tried, if he could do it one way or the other, he usually did it. Okay, all right. Problem solver. Yes. All right. Um, was he did he, was he on any sort of, like, exercise regime that you saw him do, or is he just somebody that stayed, like, active working around the house? It was just active working around the house. He's not, like, a jogger, a biker? No. A lifter or anything along those lines? No. Okay. Um, there were some questions about um, alcohol use before I get into um, that day, just in general. Nick a big drinker? No, not real big drinker. Occasionally he'll, he will, but not very often. He'll have a beer, a couple beers and after work. Okay. Um, on this day, were you concerned about his alcohol consumption on July 30th of 2022? Oh, no, no. Was he in any way, did, did you see him impaired on other days? Oh, I've seen him, yes. Yeah. On that day, was he in any way impaired? No. Were you worried about his uh, uh, intoxication level in any way, shape, or form? No. Um, and in your Again, at least one witness clears that up, if the jury believes her. For a group, was there anybody in your group that was just like slamming drinks? No. They had beers, but everybody shared them, and I don't know how many they had, but there was nobody that was intoxicated in our group like that, no. Okay. Um, showing you what's been, uh, I think we've talked before about that other exhibit. Now, here's exhibit 110. You see that photo? It's there. It's kind of his, I don't want to say signature, but he's got camel clothes. Yes, he does. Lots of them. Okay. And um, is it unusual for him when he's doing outdoor activities to wear some of those clothes? I think there's some other, uh, the original picture here, in you know, the photos now that you don't have any particular memory. No. Was it unusual? Would it be unusual for you to see him with a hat on? No, that's not unusual. Okay. He wears a hat pretty regularly? Yes. Okay. And then I think in both of these photos, he's wearing sunglasses. Is that right? Um, yeah. Fair to say that it was sunny out that day? Yes. Um, Anything that you thought was unusual about your husband wearing sunglasses on a sunny day outside? No. Uh, were there times that you saw him take the sunglasses off? I didn't pay attention. He brought some snorkel and goggles though, right? Yes. And there was certainly a time when he would, before this incident that we're going to eventually talk about, there were times that you saw him in the water using the snorkel and goggle, correct? No. You didn't see that? No. Okay. So has anyone ever showed you the photos or the video of him kind of just resting in the water with the snorkel and the goggles? No. Okay. Um, is that something that you've seen him do in the past? Um... I actually kind of like those responses. If if I'm on the defense team as defense lawyer, it may seem like, oh no, he doesn't know what she's going to say to these questions, but it makes her look not prepped. It makes her look not like a hired gun for him. It makes her look like she's just being honest and not just giving him the answers that he wants. It's also good because if that's what she said in other statements, the state can't come and cross examine her on it. If she's being consistent, like I just don't remember, I didn't see that stuff. And it's not like she's saying, yes, I saw every single thing you wanted me to see as the defense, but I didn't see anything the state wanted me to see. She's kind of answering them both the same way. I wipe your hands because the water's cold. Okay. So he thought he'd bring it with and look look for jewelry in the water. Oh, okay. That's and, why he brought it. Okay. So he says the water's cold because he wanted to know why. And I said, because your jewelry falls off, your rings will fall off your hands because the water's cold. Okay. So he thought he'd bring it with and look look for jewelry in the water. Oh, okay. That's and, why he brought it. Okay. And that's something that you guys discussed prior to that? Yes. All right. You'd also mentioned prior to, in addition to the snorkel and goggles, had you said, I think on direct, Ernesto called and asked him, to bring the pocket knife. Do you remember yes. saying that? Yes. Were you there present when you saw Nick answer the phone? Yes. And did you know who Nick was speaking to? He told me who he was talking to. Okay. And it was Ernesto? Yes. Not yet. Okay. And at some point after that phone call, did you see Nick go and do something? I saw him leave the room. Okay. And then when he came back, did he have the pocket knife that he often has? I, I don't know. He told me he, Ernesto wanted him to bring the knife. I'm sorry. This is Ernesto talking? It's a statement. Did you eventually, um, see uh, Nick at the Somerset uh, tubing parking lot using the knife to cut some strings? Yes. Were you surprised that uh, he had his pocket knife with him to cut the strings? No. Um, 
At other times during the day, did you see him using the knife to fix his shoes at all? No, I did not. I'll ask you some questions now, focusing on really about July 30th, okay? Um, at some point, there was a time when somebody in your party lost the phone, correct? Yes. And that was Ariel, correct? Yes. And there was a discussion about what you guys were going to do, correct? Yes. And eventually, Nick went off looking for the phone, correct? Yes. And when you saw him leave looking for the phone, you saw him with the snorkel and the goggles, correct? Yes. And at that point, when he left, he didn't have his hat on or his sunglasses on. Agreed? Right. And his shirt, had he been taking his shirt on and off that day? He may have. Okay. Do you remember when he walked away that time, did he have a shirt on or his shirt off? I think it was off because he was going in the water. Okay. Um, did you find it unusual when Nick decided to go help a friend and go look for a phone? No. Is that just kind of what Nick does? Yes. Is, um, when he did that, did you think you needed to keep an eye on him? No. Were you worried about him? Like no. his behavior? No. Throughout that day, had you seen him cause any conflicts that day? No. Uh, engage with anybody in a way that made you like want to control your husband's behavior? No. Were you worried about that in any, con in any way? No. Um, you were just basically like, look for the phone. I'm going to sit here and relax in the tube. Exactly. And that's what you did. That's what I did. Um, at some point, he came back and then he left again, correct? Yes. Do you know exactly what he was doing each time that he was gone from your group? No. You weren't keeping an eye out for him? No. I would sit up in the tube once in a while just to see where he was. Okay. And so this first time, you saw him down in the same area that you eventually saw him the second time. Is that fair to say? Yes. But you couldn't hear what was going on? No. You didn't see any conflict, right? No. You just basically saw Nick in the middle walking around or occasionally putting his face in the water looking for the phone? Yes. That's what you saw? Yes. No conflict at all? No. Agreed? Yes. Um, and then at some point, you said he comes back and then he leaves. Is that right? Yes. And some point during the second trip is when you notice, when you sit up in the tube, at some point you notice that there's some sort of something going on down there, correct? Yes. And it causes you concern? Yes. It causes you concern for the safety of your husband? Yes. Because you heard stuff, right? You heard like commotion noises? I don't know if I heard anything. Okay. But when I sat up in the tube, I saw stuff. And when you saw them, did you see him surrounded by other people? Um, I'm trying to think if I saw that. I, I don't remember if I saw him surrounded by people. Did you see him raise his left hand and make a motion towards you or other people in the group? No, I did not see that. Okay. Had you seen that, would you have responded? Oh, yes. Um, is your husband somebody that takes calling for help lightly? No. Have you ever seen him in a situation before where he calls for help? No. This is the first time? Yes. Um, have you ever seen a situation before where you felt like he needed help? Like it's the first time, but he's never done it before and she didn't hear it. So are we sure he did it this time? Is somebody else going to corroborate that? That's one of the issues with really digging into this as the defense. How are they going to corroborate it? Maybe he's going to take the stand and said he did it. Uh, maybe some other people from his group are going to say they heard him, but we're too scared to join. I don't know. Um, I'd be interested to hear from the other people in his group. No. So what you saw, that must have been pretty scary. Yes. Um, what exactly did you see that raised your level of fear so much that you said these other guys, they got to go down there? Um, I, that's, I don't remember if I saw anything before, but I remember seeing him in the water on his hands and knees and getting hit. Did, you, did he look to be in a safe space? No. And that's why you sent your friends down there for him? Yes. And you were worried about him? Yes. Um, the prosecutor asked questions about what his injuries were. Why didn't you just wait to see if they, like, drowned him? Objection, Judge. Why'd you send the help when you did? Again, slipping that question in there. She's like, well, you sent your friends. Why not just wait? See if they ended up killing him, drowning him. Objection. Judge sustains it. It's like, why did you wait? Well, he's kind of slipped in the answer. Let's see if she takes the bait and says, I didn't want to wait till it was too late or till something worse happened to him. We'll see what she says. Because I wanted my husband back safe. Why didn't you wait until you wanted it to get more serious? Why? You don't do that. I wanted him safe. I wanted him back. You wanted to get him in a safe spot before it got so bad that it couldn't be fixed. Yes. And you were worried that it might get so bad that it couldn't be fixed. Exactly. He's allowed to put the answer in the question again because he's cross-examining her. That's all. Jameson? Yes. Great way to end again. Very strong ending to cross. Thought it was handled really well by the defense so far. They're up at sidebar now. That caused you to send people over with stuff. And this is a uh, this is redirect now by the state. Young guys jumping out, getting up out of the tubes, right? Yeah. Okay. And then that's when Ariel and Ernesto walked over. I don't remember, I guess. I, I don't. I thought it was when he was in the water getting hit, but it may have been before that. Do you remember 
what you said to law enforcement, if it was when the kids or the young guys, however you want to describe them, got out of their tubes? I don't remember. <clears throat> and also on direct, you testified, you never heard Nikolai yell for help, right? No, I did not. And would you be smiling and going like this? No. No what? No, I didn't see that. Okay. So you didn't see anything? You didn't see a visual call for help? You didn't hear a call for help? No. Like I said, I wear hearing aids. I can't wear them in the water, and the water's loud. I wouldn't have heard him. Okay. Again, <sighs> when was I clarifying it for a third time now, gave her the opportunity to kind of fix it, and she said the water was really loud. Before, she said I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it in the water. I couldn't hear it because of the water. So now she got the double down. The water was, in fact, loud. Again, if you have a good point, sometimes you can just leave it and you don't give them a, a witness that is not friendly to you the opportunity to clarify. Is Nikolai's surgery? I want to say it was August of 2020. So about two years before July of 2022? Yes. And you said the recovery was about four to five weeks? Three to four. Three to four, okay. And then after that, you said it didn't really slow Nikolai down. He still did what he did before? Well, he it slowed him down some because sometimes it took him a little bit longer. He always got everything done, but he just couldn't do it. Because that's what he did before because he didn't have the strength. Okay. Still did yard work, chores around the house, that kind of stuff. Right. He wasn't feeble. Hmm? He wasn't feeble. No. He still run. Yeah, he just had the pain. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you've seen him make a gesture with his left hand waving you, you would have considered that a call. Speculation, hypothetical. You should already answer the question. I wasn't done asking, I guess, when you... I'm not, Good point. Finish asking the question. I think we've already gone through this. Just following up on his this redirect. This is so, recross. Yeah, I think now. we've already gone through And like this, you would have considered that from your husband, who you've known for that long, a call for help. Yes. So again, I think he's asking about the, you know, gesture, waving his hand, because you'll be able to see that on the video. So that's something the jury can actually hold on to that actually happened. And she would consider that a call for help, but she didn't see or hear it. I think that she's already answered the question again. Next topic. Please. You were asked some questions about when you actually raised a concern so much though that you sent two men over there to help your husband. Remember that? Yes. And what I believe you first said on the first time was when you saw him getting hit, you sent the two people over, correct? Yes. But we came to learn that you may have been concerned even before that and sent people over to help him even before that. I may have, yes. You were worried. You didn't wait until he got hit. You were worried about it even before that, correct? Yes. You just saw a situation in which he looked like he was outnumbered by a bunch of young men, correct? Yes. And that concerned you? Yes. And that's why you sent some other people over there, correct? Yes. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Newby. You step down. Judge, if I didn't already. The so that is a really, really interesting testimony to me from his wife, called by the state. Again, I think it's important for us to remember that. The state called... Uh, her as a witness, not the defense. Defense could have called her later, but they would not have been able to cross-examine her if they would have had to call her in her case in chief. Now, maybe it would have looked like the state was trying to hide her, but I don't think so. I think the, the jury's obviously going to assume that um, the defendant's wife is going to be there and try to testify on his behalf. I don't know, but let me know what you thought about that. Spousal privilege argument at the beginning, I thought was an interesting legal um, argument as well. Um, okay, so now we're going to get to this. This is a warning part of it. If you don't want to see the video where... Um, the actual stabbing occurs. Now's the time to sign off, but I want to hear from another victim. Um, stabbing occurred because in the state, in the, uh, defense's opening statement, they do a freeze frame that I thought was really effective of where a, one of the victims had kind of their hands around the defendant's neck and was lunging at the defendant. And that's where the defendant responded with at least, you know, one of the stabbings it's, it's one, um, first degree murder charge and then four attempted first degree charges. And this is one of the victims with the attempted first degree charges. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, he testifies to kind of what he thought, what he was doing. We see the video, which to me doesn't look great for the victim, but then we see the victim's scar, which again, if you don't want to see this, don't watch this part, I'm warning you as much as I can here, but the scar I think is going to be effective for the jury to see the carnage that happened. Yes. A young person lost their life, but four other people um, were victims in this. And this scar is nasty and brutal and it's a really sad case. And I think it could play for the emotions for the jury to, you know, make sure they get justice here. And maybe emotions will run a little bit higher than the defense wants to. And the the state has done, done this with a couple witnesses, but this one I thought it was effective with, even though the defense did get, it was just an interesting witness because there was some points the defense could make with the video. And then obviously points the state could make with the testimony and the scar.
26, 80, is that your shorts? Yep. These yellow shorts. He's got yellow shorts on. And they're slow mowing here because I have it sped up to 1.25 speed. That's him. He comes and shoves him down. He stands up. He's lunging at him again. That's the stab, and that's the freeze frame where he was choking him. So it all happened kind of fast. Stopped um, at 2,800. Let me just kind of freeze frame where the defense did. So the defense did a better job, but he basically gets his hands up around his neck. That's when he stabs, hits him in the gut. Stopped at 2,800. Um, the knife. So it all happened really fast. But that section again, of frames. Shoving the defendant in the water, going after him again. Multiple other young guys surrounding him. The defense is trying to prove he was in reasonable fear for his life, which is the standard that you have to prove for self-defense in Wisconsin. But let's hear the victim's testimony and then see the scar that, that the jury sees. So I just went through, AJ, are those, is that the part where you got hit yeah. the knife? Yeah. And that, did you know that guy's name at the time? No. Now, you know, no, I'm Nick Lamu. Yeah. It is possible that he does win on self-defense with some of the victims and not others. Like maybe because they have this exact still shot of him lunging at him, it would be not guilty against him for self-defense, but guilty against the person who lost their life. That's, a, that's absolutely a possible outcome in this case. Each victim and each count its own individual thing the state has to prove. Right. This, this exhibit, um, 29... If you know, I don't want you to speculate, but do you know if that's, and again, don't answer. If you, if you don't know, it's fine to say you don't know. Is that from the slice or was it, did you have further incisions from surgery? No, that's all from the slice. There's, um, it actually goes from, like, you can't see it super well in the picture, but it goes above my rib cage too. They, they didn't have to open me up. I was already open. It's one thing to see it in a picture. It's another for them to actually see it in real life, which they do here. Again, last warning. It stops right there. That is a we'll nasty there. scar. Dangerous weapon, obviously. Something the defendant did. The jury can see it up close and personal. Hard to see. Young dude here. Really sad. Now, some I know there are going to be some comments. Oh, he deserved it. He, you know, went after him, whatever it may have been. It's not okay to hit somebody, shove somebody, punch somebody. I agree. It's not okay to do those things, but nobody deserves this. I feel terrible for him. Um, I wish none of this happened, obviously, but I do think it's effective presentation of evidence by the state. Um, the defense will also use that video. The defense will also argue he was lunging at him. The defense will also make those points. Um, and it is true. And the video says a thousand words, pictures worth a thousand words, things like that. So um, there have been witnesses where both sides have gotten some punches across, made some points. I thought that was important to kind of show you a couple of them and just kind of get your feeling on where you're at if you're watching the trial right now. And hit that like button if you guys um, want me to continue covering this case, pulling some witnesses, discussing some of the major elements and themes of the trial, um, and we can continue to discuss it together. Let me know your questions in the comments, um, and I will look through them, and we will discuss them together. But that's it. That's all we got for today. Until next time, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out The Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, The Lawyer You Know.